with a four jaw chuck. Fiddly little job this on the Warco, but you get used to it. Three nuts, three washers, and off she comes. Making sure we don't drop it on the bed of the lathe. I am holding it in position, but it should stay there on its own. Three nuts, three washers, little jiggle, and off she comes. It's vitally important that you keep this register and this face on the lathe in good condition. Um, no rubbish, no muck, no dirt, or anything in there when you put a chuck on and off or anything else on and off. Um, because the accuracy of this diameter and this face determines the accuracy of everything that you put onto it and how it sits in relation to the spindle and the rest of it. So, just a little tip there, make sure that this is kept perfectly clean. And there's probably nothing better than using your fingers. Uh, wipe it off with a brush, a little bit of oil before you put your next chuck on, what have you. Okay, so I've set my block up in the milling slide. Um, Fortunately, it was exactly the right size to be able to tighten it up with the two screws I used for my milling vise. However, knowing that this swivels, to get it square into the lathe, I could clock it up, but it's a far simpler way. The face on the headstock is perfectly square to the ways of the machine. So simply by bringing it, bringing it in to there and squaring it off, I know that that face is parallel to the axle, axle, haha, <laughs> axis of the machine. So I've brought it into that face, keeping it tight too. Tighten up the milling slide, and I know now, know now, I now know that this face is perfectly square to this face, and it's just quicker than clocking it up. I've done this once before off camera. Uh, checked it with a clock and it was absolutely fine it was spot on to within you know unmeasurable amounts um, certainly with the equipment I got but it was uh, it was spot on square so I'm more than happy with that um, also looked vertically just to check if there was any uh, deviation in this plane and there was no gap top or bottom against this ground face so I know that this complete face here is dead square to where I want to be square with the world ready to machine Okay, so having squared up the block in the milling attachment, the next thing to do is to fit the cutter up in the headstock. So what I've got here is a 10 mil Morse tape collet, Morse taper three, which is exactly the same as the bore of the lathe, and fits in there. I've made sure that my bore is really nice and clean. Um, again, I always find using your fingers probably the best way um, gets out any little flecks of dirt or what have you that a piece of cloth might leave behind. I've got a 10mm end mill um, which is going to go in the collet. It's 10mm diameter shank which fits the 10mm collet perfectly. And I have my draw bar. Now my draw bar fits right through the turret of the lathe from the back. Um, tightens up on the draw tube on this turned um, aluminium part here which fits exactly in location in the back a pair of lock nuts it's basically a piece of 12 mil studding and in the collet itself it's M12 so the way this works is that I put it in the headstock and when I tighten up on these nuts it pulls the collet back into its taper and squeezes up on the three slots on the collet tightening on the cutter um, and it's it's perfectly ground inside and out and this will contract in a way where it keeps the cutter running perfectly true to the center of the machine so let's go ahead and fit that Fit my cutter. 
not any further than the parallel part on the cutter. I don't want the flutes going inside the collar. And I'll tighten that up with a 19mm spanner and that's the cutter fitted. So I've now set my cutter up in the headstock and it's well clamped in. I've brought my carriage forward until the cutter touches the surface of the block and then set my DRO to zero. Well I did, it's 0 0.02, let's just put that to zero. There we are, zero. I've also set my carriage lock to the same spot and by loosening the bolt and unscrewing it through there's a lock nut this side and, and a thread through the centre so if I screw this further and further in I can actually have a stop position of my cut and I'll keep an eye on it on the DRO. So what I'm aiming to do as you can see I've drawn a line on the block that line is at six millimeters from the face I'm planning on machining it to 5.9 millimeters and I'll be leaving the last point one for the dovetail, dovetail cutter to do at the end. Um, the line at the top, the next line up, um, that line is 16 millimeters down from the center line. You'll see another one above. And that's going to give me 32 millimeters on the flat square shoulders about the center of the block. It'll be a square 32 millimeters by 5.9 deep. Once I've completed that, I'll be changing out for the dovetail cutter and cutting the dovetails and we'll talk about that later. So for now, let's get machining. So, unscrew the bolt a little bit to allow a cut, loosen the carriage off, bring it forward, lock the carriage, machine the face. Okay, so this is the final pass, taking the depth of that cut in this direction to 5.9 millimeters deep from the front face. As I said, I'll finish it off when I do the dovetail cutter um, to 6 mil, so that the step is exactly 6 mil. Um, so now, by the width of that cutter, I'll now be 5.9 deep. The next thing to do will be to drop this block down uh, one step at a time until I get that shoulder height where I want it to be. So from the centre line to that shoulder I want to be 16 mil. And that's that.
bugger. Ah oh, well, set it all up again. Here we are, that's both sides of that tenon done. Um, now a 6.5 deep tenon, which I've machined a 6.4 to get rid of the mark from where I smashed a melon cutter up. Okay. <laughs>